Welcome to this demo in which we will have a look at how to connect to our virtual computers in the cloud. So if you're watching this, you are probably taking a course that has generated uh, a, a virtual server for you in our uh, OpenStack environment that we call CES Cloud. Uh, and in this demo, I will show how to uh, log in to that machine so that we can install uh, or use the machine in whatever way we like. Um, what you will have to notice first of all is that in your um, repository or in your student group at, at uh, the GitLab, you would have something like this, a secret, uh, uh, secret project in which the keys for your computer is uh, is uh, given to you. So head over to your course and find the secret uh, group or secret project. So I will enter that one and in this project you will find a readme file or a text file or something indicating the IP address and the domain name for that machine that you have, your virtual machine. You will also find this um, key uh, this is SSH key and the SSH key is the only way for you to connect to uh, this machine and log into this machine. We have deactivated the, the, the possibility to have a password and a username, uh, uh, the, the normal credential way. So, so the only way to connect to those machines is through SSH. Uh, that means that you need to download this SSH key uh, and this SSH key is paired with your IP address, so you cannot use this SSH key to connect to any other computer. It's only for this, this cloud computer that you have received. Um, so first of all, take note of your IP address and your domain name. We will need them later. And uh, also make sure that you have this SSH key. So the next thing you you will have to do is to uh, go into this uh, SSH uh, key and download it. And I will do just that. Don't try to like replicate this key because I have of course removed this one when you look at this recording. Um, on my computer, I've just opened a bash terminal. If you are on Mac and Linux, that shouldn't be a problem if you are using Windows, you should use the Git bash that you have probably installed. Uh, this file that I downloaded, it ended up in my downloads uh, folder and I don't want it in the downloads folder. I will actually move this to a special folder called uh, .ssh that you find in the uh, home directory uh, of your user. If we look at this folder, you will find probably an id.rsa and a pub. Those are the default SSH keys that you probably have generated. You might have something for connecting to GitLab or GitHub or something like that as well. Um, and I will actually uh, remove this one because that was when I tried this earlier. Uh, so could look something like this. You could you probably have fewer keys, but in my case, I have keys for different machines and stuff like that. Uh, if you find something like pub, this is the public key, uh, and and those keys always come in a pair. We have the public key and the private key. Uh, the private key is the one that we have here. This is a private key. Uh, the public part of that key is kept on the server that you will connect to. And, and that's how the server knows that, okay, so the messages encrypted with this private key uh, are okay. Since I have the, the, the public key, I can verify that, that the one on the other side has the private key and that is the owner of, 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 of this key pair. Um, in this case, we haven't given you the public key, but you can find it on your server when you log into it if you like. But in this case, it's enough with a private key. So I will actually put my private key in this folder and I will do that by moving it from the uh, download downloads folder. And it was called in my case, uh, TST Yo student key SSH PEM and I will move it here and I will name it 1db026.pem. And 
I, I, I will do this because you might have different keys in different courses and it could be quite nice to, to just know what the key is meant for so, so you don't mix them up. Um, and now I have the one DV026 key here. You will notice that there's something fuzzy with the writes compared to the other keys, but we will soon get into to why that is and, and, and fix that actually. Using this key, I can now connect to my uh, uh, computer on the IP address that you see in front of you. Uh, and I do that by just doing the SSH command. Uh, and on those machines, the username is always Ubuntu. So Ubuntu at, since it's a Ubuntu 2004, and we have that default username. So we connect using Ubuntu at 194.47.177. And you, of course, need to replace this with your uh, IP address. Uh, if I try that, uh, you will first get this notion that, OK, so we haven't connected to this computer before. Is, do you want to save this fingerprint so that we can ensure that you are connecting to the correct computer in the in the future? And we want to do that. But we get a permission denied, uh, of course, since we haven't provided any, any uh, private keys when we are connecting. So by uh, doing the SSH and um, adding uh, hyphen I, we can add uh, which key we want to connect using. And I add, uh, I, I connect using 1DV026. Um, yeah, <laughs> this is correct. <laughs> so when we try to do this, it's, it warns us, oh, you have an unprotected private key file. Don't, uh, because and this comes back to the rights because we have given everybody uh, and the group right, uh, read access for this file and we should not have that so we need to remove that uh, in this case if we look at the other ones they have 600 as um, uh, as the the correct um, um, uh, the correct rights so so we will add that by using the schmod command uh, schmod uh, 600 and our file was called 1db like that and now we try to connect again using that ssh key and success we we are in the server we can see what that we are now in the tsd student server uh, and as the ubuntu user so fine so so now we're in the server we can do whatever we like in the server right now however it's it's a little bit hazard to, to, to that we need to to uh, to 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 point out this uh, this SSH key all the time. So instead of doing that, we could add this SSH key to the SSH agent on on my computer, so that the next time I try to connect to this server, it will look in the SSH agent agent find that we have a key that is matching the server and provided that key. So we need to do that. I think this should work the same way if you're using Git Bash on Windows. However, I cannot guarantee it. Uh, we can use the SSH add command and you, you can just do SSH, SSH add and provide the pen file and it says identity added. However, if we do it like this, the next time you restart your computer, you will probably have to, to do this again. It only lives for the session of the SSH agent being started. So if the SSH agent is restarted, you need to add the identity once again. On Mac, you add that by, and I think it's the same on Windows. However, you might run into problems on Windows. I'm, I'm not sure, but on Mac, you just add the dash K to add this to the keychain. And if I do that, this will be persistent if I, I re restart my computer. By doing that, the only thing I need to do now is to, to connect to uh, SSH Ubuntu at uh, 190, what was it, 147, 177 to 116. Uh, mm -mm, that did not work as intended. Uh, because I've written it completely wrong. Ubuntu, that's why it doesn't work too. 
Okay, so Ubuntu at 194, 47, 177, 216. And now we don't need to, to provide this SSH key all the time. Um, this is basically it when it comes to connecting to that computer. You can do an exit uh, and we are back in uh, our uh, local computer. So this is the first step you need to take to, to, uh, to work to, uh, to work against our, our virtual service.